You might have wondered why investors focus so much on a company's earnings per share, but not on its net income. After all, net income appears on the income statement, it's very easy to calculate, and it's a direct measure of the company's profit. So why is it that investors focus on this more complicated calculation and fixate on this earnings per share figure? And the answer is that every company has a different number of common shares outstanding. Thus, it's not all that helpful to compare the net income of one company to the net income of another company. Investors want to know the profit attributable to each common share of stock. For example, if you own one common share of a company, what is your share of that company's net income? And that's what earnings per share represents. So let's do an example. So let's say that company A has net income of $20 million. They don't have any preferred shares, so there's not going to be any preferred dividends. We don't have to worry about that. And they have 1 million common shares outstanding. So let's calculate their earnings per share. We just got 20 million in the numerator, 1 million in the denominator. So it's pretty easy, $20 earnings per share for company A. Now let's compare that to company B. Let's say company B has the same net income. Okay, so same net income. So if you're comparing just on net income, you say, well, hey, they both have the net, the same net income. I guess they did equally well and you know so forth, right? No preferred shares and then 20 million common shares outstanding. Okay, so now let's calculate the earnings per share and see how that's different. We see the numerator, we still have 20 million as the net income. There's no preferred dividends, don't have to worry about that. But now we have 20 million in the denominator. The denominator is higher because the company has a lot more common shares outstanding. And so its earnings per share is lower. It has an earnings per share of just $1 compared to $20 for the other company. So they both generated the same profit when you just look at net income. But if you just own a single share, if you own this company, you'd say that a higher amount of profit is attributable to that share, that single share owned by an investor. Now, if you say, well, how realistic is an example like this? I wanna do a real life example for you. And we're gonna look at two companies that manufacture consumer packaged goods. So we got Procter & Gamble and Kimberly Clark. And what I did was I looked up the actual financial information for each of these companies in their most recent annual filing as of when I produced this video. So here I've got Procter & Gamble, I've got their net income, and I've got Kimberly Clark's net income, and these are actual amounts, okay? Now these amounts are in millions, so this actually, this number here for Procter & Gamble, that's 14.742 billion, okay? So uh, almost $15 billion in net income for Procter & Gamble, 1.8 billion for Kimberly Clark. So if you, if you calculate this out, actually Procter & Gamble's net income is eight times higher, more than eight times higher than Kimberly Clark's net income. So you might say, well, Procter & Gamble is, is blowing uh, Kimberly Clark away. Why would anyone ever want to invest in Kimberly Clark and so forth? But let's go and calculate the earnings per share for each of them. So I went and I, uh, in the annual filing, I found the amount of dividends paid to preferred shareholders uh, for Procter & Gamble. It was $281 million. Kimberly Clark, I couldn't find uh, anything in their filing about them paying any dividends to preferred shareholders. And then I got the weighted average number of common shares outstanding. And so we see that the earnings per share for Procter & Gamble was $6. Okay, so $6 compared to $5.38 for Kimberly Clark. So Procter & Gamble did have higher earnings per share. If you remember, it had more than eight times the net income of Kimberly Clark. However, when you look at these two earnings per share, Procter & Gamble's earnings per share isn't eight times higher. It is higher, it's $6 a share instead of $5.38 a share, but it's not eight times higher. So we have comparable earnings per share between these two firms. They're close to each other, right? They're similar earnings per share. And yet Procter & Gamble had a net income more than eight times what Kimberly Clark's was. How do we account for this? Well, look at the number of common shares. Kimberly Clark had just 337 million common shares outstanding, whereas Procter & Gamble had 2.4 billion. So yes, Procter & Gamble had a much higher profit when we measure the net income, but they also had a lot more common shares outstanding. And so after we adjust for that, we see that there's not as big a difference between the earnings per share for these two companies.